Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup of coffee and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Dave, a modern day sage. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks for joining us. Here's a little something extra from the Young Crones Cafe to get you through until our next regularly scheduled episode. This is a tongue-in-cheek myth about the origin and migration of the gods. I recently published my first novel called Home Place through Amazon self-publishing, and <laughs> there are old gods and new gods that are kind of recurring characters that are interacting with the human population in this city. And a friend of mine suggested, well, if you have all these gods running around, there should be a story about them. So I wrote a short story, and I just thought I'd share it with you to give you a few moments of humor in the middle of these hot summer days. So here it is. All the gods are created from chaos, that place of confused, unorganized, primordial matter without distinct forms. The first to emerge was the originator, who designed all the patterns of the universe. Originator created all those dichotomies, those twos that can't exist independently of each other, like light and dark, above and below, within and without. This action set the galaxies to whirling in their eternal dance. To this day, Originator still maintains the orderly chaos of creation itself. In the beginning, the universe was quiet, but as it grew and changed, life began to emerge on various planets. Each was different according to what an environment could support. Because of this, each planet was gifted with a creator god by the Originator. Creators were put there to oversee things and to gift the beings with other gods to help meet their needs to understand their world and themselves. On a small blue planet in an out-of-the-way solar system, the creator had grown to be happy with their work. The resentment at being given such a small planet to manage was a thing of the long past. The planet was deceptively uninteresting in appearance, but full to bursting with primordial growth and change. The creator nurtured the plants and animals, and they were easy to satisfy because of their connection with the Earth itself. So we lived free of those existential anxieties, which was the source of all needs for different gods in the first place. The recent emergence of beings who were slowly losing their connections to the Earth was a minor inconvenience in comparison to the age of the planet itself. These beings needed complex gods to worship to use for answers to things like why there were storms and lightning, and war, and love, and wisdom. On top of that, <clears throat> these beings were split into different groups somehow, based on where they lived, so they required different manifestations of the same energy that they could connect to and worship correctly. It is so much easier with the dolphins, the creator mused. They all live in different areas of the ocean, but they are linked somehow and have this ability to communicate with each other over long distances. So the creator began to work with the needs of these beings and sorted them out so that their requests were grouped together by type. Out of these, the creator fashioned the various gods for the humans as they were now named. As each was finished, the creator told them about the needs of the various groups of humans and how they would be able to split themselves apart into forms that each group would recognize and learn to worship. The creator find it, found it satisfying to watch each god stream around the planet and split apart in a blazing light show, speeding into each pocket of humans where they were needed most. The idea that these lights could be entertaining was pushed into the ether to later become fireworks when the inspiration struck one of the humans thousands of years later. As time passed, the gods and humans developed an interesting symbiotic relationship. The humans gave the gods a human appearance they could relate to, dividing their characteristics into male and female forms. 
They built temples with elaborate statues of them, which created a priesthood who spent their days in ritual worship and instructed the other humans in the proper way to approach a god with their needs and requests. This energy of worship fed the energy needs of the gods and enabled them to grant at least some of the humans requests, which generated more worship, which generated more power for the gods. This relationship worked well for thousands of years, but because this earth planet seemed to be in a constant state of flux somehow, everything slowly began to change within the human communities. First, they discovered each other through trade and conquest and began to mix and match the energies of the archetypes of each god with the same gods of other cultures. This was what began the diminishing of the worship system. When one culture conquered another, the god of the vanquished was absorbed back into the similar energy of the victor. There was no animosity on the part of the gods. After all, like calls to like has always been a basic principle of how the whole universe created and functioned. Other cultures vanished off the face of the earth, whether from disease or some disaster that destroyed it utterly. These gods were left homeless in a sense and wandered off to find others exactly like them to also come back together. Little by little, the gods began to inhabit smaller and smaller areas and their influence began to slowly wane with the humans. The creator had seen this coming, being well aware of the innate curiosity of the particular type of being. This curiosity drove them to understand the seemingly inexplicable parts of their world and themselves. Another influence was the rise of cultures that seemed to be willing to worship a single all-encompassing creator type god and to stamp out any worship of the old ones who had been such a part of their parents, part of their development. Like teenagers who often reject the beliefs and values of their parents, most turned their back on the old ones, embracing monotheism with enthusiasm, along with philosophy and the arts and sciences. A god arises and is powerful only as long as they meet the needs of humanity for a time. Then their power fades, and then they remain alive in the shadows of memory, but still exist on the corporal plane stuck in the last form that humans had given them. Many of the old gods were ancient and re-emerged periodically to full power because their intrinsic energy was called upon once again. Such a god was one of war. Humans were constantly creating new and different ways to wage war on each other for inconsequential slights and disagreements. Another was the personification of the goddess of fate, whose existence was so interwoven with that of the humans that she remained a powerful deity throughout the ages and changes of the planet. Many of them faded completely and were absorbed back into the primordial source from which they arose. The remaining old ones became wanderers, moving from city to city throughout the civilized world, always remaining on the periphery. They grew to like the peace and quiet that came from not having to be bothered by human requests for love, wealth, fame, inspiration, and the like. They were always aware of where others like them were located. They were similar enough in energy to recognize each other, but didn't want to call attention to their being so different from the humans they lived with. The beings had entered an age where they were likely to try to destroy anything they perceived as too different or a threat to the monotheistic churches, which had grown exponentially in the influence they had over most of the population. Humans became explorers in their quest for more spaces to inhabit and to find sources of raw materials for the things they had learned to make and desire. As part of this expansion, fate had crossed an ocean to create a space for herself in one of these expanding population centers that eventually grew to become the city. She settled quietly into a neighborhood of beings that others called immigrants, those newly arrived in the new territories and didn't quite fit in with the society that was already living and working there. It was the perfect disguise, and she existed there quietly without incident. Living in one of the buildings they called brownstones, her energy slowly became intermingled with the bricks themselves, and the building awoke because of becoming a quiet, sentient presence in the middle of the neighborhood. Its energy became a beacon that called out to the old ones scattered over the world. Some of the old gods had lived in this city with the people since its founding, those that were previously bolder and more adventurous than others. The rest had found their way to the city one by one from their former places. Each had been welcomed by fate who was waiting for their arrival. 
Her connection to the twists and turns of time had let her know they would be coming. Some had been angry and resentful over their fall from grace, while others were more accepting of the situation. They settled into a quiet life of retirement from the world amongst the new human immigrant populations that moved into and then out of the neighborhood as they developed connections with this new country. Grateful that their endless wandering was over, they settled into a life of quiet obscurity with only occasional spat with each other. However, the humans have always found something to devote their energy of worship to, and as their civilization grew and expanded, they began to put their energy into all sorts of modern needs. The creator was always monitoring and again sorted their needs by type, creating new gods to meet them. They tended to be specialists whose powers were limited in scope to their areas of expertise. This explained why new gods arose dedicated to things like the pursuit of coffee, social media, and parking. These new ones mixed and mingled with the humans in ways that scandalized many of the old ones who worried about being discovered. They were savvy enough in modern ways to be aware that there were still those humans who would have them destroyed as evil monsters with too much perceived power. They had seen ample evidence over the centuries of the mob mentality to which many humans were susceptible. While some of the old ones were still somewhat powerful because of their talent at adapting their ability to absorb energy to the needs of their times, others, like the god of money, had changed his own focus from bartering to investment banking, which let him be part of the modern world's needs. Similarly, the gods of music and writing who worked as muses to the artists of the world did the same. Still others had their worship revived somewhat by the emergence of witches from the shadows who had always followed the old ways somewhat, and this neo-pagan movement who were trying to recreate the worship of before. Now old and new alike were quiet fixtures living in apartments scattered throughout the neighborhood. The old ones each had a space that suited them, decorated in colors and items that reminded them of their pasts, and it soothed them. The new ones, for the most part, had places scattered all over the city in different neighborhoods, but retained at least a small place in the neighborhood because it was home to them. When they arose, they all seemed to have first appear somewhere in the area. The energy of the gods attracted all sorts of creative types, and the area had become a mecca of sorts for artists and performers. While their interactions with each other were similar to those of the best of dysfunctional human families, in general, it all worked out well for the most part. I hope you enjoyed this tongue and treat myth about the origin and migration of the gods. Until next time, may you find mirth and reverence in all things. Well, it looks like the coffee cups are empty for this week. We hope you join us again next Tuesday. But you can find us at our website, twoyoungcrones.com. That's the number two, Young Crones. We'd love to have you join our growing online Discord community. Check out our new Patreon presence. Just look for Young Crones Cafe. Through Patreon, you'll be able to make it to our Discord. We are also Young Crones Cafe on Twitter and Facebook. Until then, remember, we are witches who work with energies to affect change. We are believers in both imminent and transcendent divine. We are celebrants of the passage of the solar and lunar cycles. We are hedge walkers who pass back and forth between the worlds of the magical and the mundane. We are seekers of knowledge. And we are walkers of a spiritual tradition we call the path. So mode it be. So mode it be. Mm-hmm.